Starting off at number 10, we have Ellen DeGeneres. This is one that you should all know about, but I'll give you the lowdown anyways. Ellen's perfect castle of niceness came crashing down earlier this year when reports started to surface that she was incredibly two-faced. And she was actually way meaner in real life than she portrayed on her show. Then it got even worse when reports came out that her show was incredibly toxic too, and she allowed terrible behavior to happen to the crew of the show. After months of laying low, Ellen opened her 18th season with a long-awaited apology. Part of the apology said, quote, I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. I take that very seriously and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power and I realize that with that comes responsibility and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. And although her adoring fans accepted the apology, tons of people did not and they didn't like how she reinforced the idea that she really just wasn't aware of what was happening when people think that she did. Also make sure to like the video if you haven't already. In at number 9, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel was forced to apologize after clips resurfaced of him in blackface while acting in a comedy sketch. He addressed the claims in a long statement where he starts off saying that he was reluctant to address the scandal because he knew it would be used as a political tool to undermine his political beliefs. Adding quote, that delay was a mistake. There is nothing more important to me than your respect and I apologize to those who were genuinely hurt or offended by the makeup I wore or the words that I spoke. He continued by giving context that when he was portraying the character of NBA player Karl Malone, he only thought of portraying him for his personality, not his race. And although the apology was accepted by some, it was criticized heavily for the political tones that were unnecessarily included. At number 8, Josh Peck. If you were a fan of Drake and Josh in the past, this might break your heart a little. It seems like Josh Peck and Drake Bell are not the brothers that they used to be after some drama occurred surrounding the guest list of Josh's 2017 wedding. It all started when Drake tweeted about having not been invited to the wedding where he said, quote, when you're not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. End quote. Drake followed up this tweet saying, quote, loyalty is key, always remember where you came from, and ended his little Twitter rant by saying, quote, true colors have come out this day, message is loud and clear, ties are officially cut, I'll miss you brother. End quote. Seems like Drake was pretty butthurt about this, but what did Josh have to say about it? Well, it turns out that the reason why Drake wasn't invited to the wedding was because he had neglected to congratulate Josh on his engagement. Understandable, I guess. The two ended up patching things up after some time had passed, but there was a time where Drake and Josh were at odds with each other and this story sort of flew under the radar. So here's to the kids who grew up watching Drake and Josh, I'm keeping you guys updated. At number 7, Jerry Seinfeld. Did anyone else know that Jerry Seinfeld dated an 18 year old when he was almost 40? Because I didn't and it seemed like this story had totally flown under the radar. Until now, that is. But yes, you heard me correctly, Jerry Seinfeld dated an 18 year old when he was 39. This was a thing back in 1993 where Jerry told sources that one day while in Central Park, he laid eyes on what he called the most wonderful girl in the world. He went to talk to her and exchanged numbers with the then 17 year old. The girl, Shoshana Lonstein, was still in high school at the time of meeting the actor. When asked about their obvious age difference, Jerry said, quote, I didn't realize she was so young. This is the only girl I ever went out with that was that young. I wasn't dating her. We just went to a restaurant and that was it. Over the next few months after Shoshana turned 18, the two were dating low key. The tabloids saw him out with several women, including Shoshana, during this time, but they couldn't get over the age difference. Obviously, they're no longer together, but it was a total scandal at the time. At number six, Woody Harrelson. We know Woody Harrelson as a successful actor known for films like The Hunger Games, Now You See Me, and Natural Born Killers, but the latter is a movie that might hit Woody here a little close to home. You see, he's not the only one in his family to have notoriety because his father Charles has also garnered fame, but for all the wrong reasons. Woody Harrelson's dad was a hitman. When paparazzi and reporters want to dig up your past views against you, this one will certainly strike a nerve with Woody. Charles Harrelson was a hitman known by most as the man who assassinated US federal judge John H. Wood. According to Woody, his father Charles left the family when he was still young and said that he hadn't heard from him until 1981 when the news of his father's arrest was broadcast. Until his death in 2007, Woody had a strained relationship with his father, though he admitted that he would visit him in prison often. Of all the celebrity parents, Woody his dad was definitely one of the wildest. At number 5, Millie Vanilli. The lip sync scandal that surrounded Millie Vanilli was one of music's biggest scandals and I've never heard about it. Have you? 
Essentially, Milli Vanilli was a musical duo that was never really real. I mean, they were real people, but their music wasn't theirs. The stage act was put together by German record producer Frank Farron in an attempt to create a star from scratch. He had a vision to be able to put out this amazing music, but he needed the perfect act to sell it. That's where Morvan and Politis came into play. These two dancers were hired by Farron to be the faces of Milli Vanilli, and though it was a musical act, they didn't have to sing. In fact, they never did. The songs were written and produced for them to lip sync to, and it worked for a while, but like all good things, they can never last. Milli Vanilli conquered the Billboard charts and even won a Grammy for their song Girl You Know It's True. They were asked to tour and perform live, but since this act never actually sang, things started to get difficult for them and playing pretend wasn't working anymore. When they would encounter technical difficulties with their track while live, it was stressful and humiliating. Eventually, they were caught in their lie as their track suddenly stopped working during a live performance, revealing to the world that they were faking it all along. This took a huge toll on the duo, especially their mental health, driving Politis to take their own life. This ended in tragedy, but it was still a huge scandal at the time. At number four, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is always in some kind of trouble. He's either making waves in the media for acting a mess, whether that's being racist or pulling wild stunts. Most recently, he's faced backlash as he's been accused of harming his ex-girlfriend FKA Twigs. But there's another scandal, rather scandals, that might not be as well known, and that's his plagiarism and lying. Shia LaBeouf has been caught plagiarizing people's works and lying about it on many occasions, but he's never really learned from his mistakes. He's been caught plagiarizing apologies, then plagiarizing other apologies to apologize for plagiaries. <laughs> He's copied the actions of Sia and the words of Tigger and a plethora of other people, but one of the biggest plagiarism scandals he faced is when he ripped off a plot from a graphic novel for his film, HowardCantour.com, which premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. When he got caught plagiarizing, he claimed that he had no idea that the plot was the same, and then when issuing a statement slash apology for his actions, he once again turned to plagiarism and copied a Yahoo Answers post. Because of how many times he's done something like this, I have to wonder if he's doing this on purpose to make it his brand or something because he knows he's not getting away with it. At number three, Dr. Seuss. Recently, we've been hearing a lot of news about Dr. Seuss. Well, his books, really. Though he was a beloved children's book author, famous for creating The Cat in the Hat, The Grinch, and Horton Hears a Who, now people are finding out that some of his books contain racist imagery. Six of Dr. Seuss's books have now been pulled from his collection and will no longer be published because of racist imagery, but this discussion isn't new and has been a minor scandal for many, many years. A survey of Seuss's work found that the portrayal of black characters in his books Books relied heavily on, quote, anti-blackness and images of white supremacy, end quote. Schools and libraries have been banning many of Seuss's books because of the racist portrayals of non-white characters, and these criticisms have been linked as far back as the 80s. It's good to know that now people are recognizing racism and taking action to eliminate it from our world, so it's a good step forward. This scandal has been brewing in the background for some time now, so people are only now learning about it, which is probably why no one really knew about it until recently. At number two, Sinead O'Connor. In October 1992, Sinead O'Connor caused some controversy during her guest spot on SNL. She was brought on the show to be the evening's musical guest, and already people were a little confused by her as she refused to sing one of her songs from her recent album at the time. She instead opted to sing an a cappella version of Bob Marley's song War. It was an intense performance and she even changed some of the lyrics to specifically mention young people. As the song came to an end and she was wrapping up her performance, she pulled out a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up saying, quote, fight the real enemy. Sinead's actions caused a huge stir. After her performance, NBC started receiving thousands of angry calls over the following days and even some celebrities came forward to criticize her actions. She wanted to to bring attention to the Catholic Church's treatment of young people because she's had personal experience with such things. I never knew about the scandal, so I'm curious to know how many of you guys remember this. And finally, at number one, Justin Bieber. Jay Beebs has had a plethora of scandals. As we all know, he's had a rough time in the public eye for many years, and he's caused a lot of trouble. His relationship with Selena Gomez, as well as many DUIs, music scandals, as well as being banned from some places are a few that come to mind, but one scandal that might be new to some is that in 2011, a woman alleged that Justin was the father of her child. Mariah Yeeter came forward in 2011 claiming that she had once met up with Justin backstage after one of his concerts and that he had fathered her child. When this news first broke, Justin said that he had never even met Mariah, let alone had a relationship with her, but since the media was blowing the story up and Mariah 
when I was looking to enter into a paternity suit, Justin agreed to take a DNA test to prove that the baby wasn't his. He ended up addressing this whole situation in his song Maria, but unfortunately for the Biebs, this kind of thing would happen again in 2013 with yet another fan. He didn't father any children though, so I guess that's good for him. Our countdown number 10 is Jake Paul calls COVID a hoax. During a recent interview with the Daily Beast, Marlo Stern claimed that Jake thought the deadly virus was a hoax. After receiving a ton of backlash, Jake denied ever saying that and said the reporter misquoted him and took what he said out of context. But then the reporter fought back and tweeted out an audio clip of what he actually said. Marlo Stern tweeted, here's the audio of Jake Paul telling me COVID is a hoax, that America should open back up, and comparing it to the flu. The audio link was actually on SoundCloud, but Jake's team had it taken down, so Marlo tweeted it out again, but not as a SoundCloud link. And Jake clearly says in the audio that he thinks it's a hoax and that the flu kills just as many people. The audio was not good for Jake. But when you listen or read the full interview, Jake says he feels like the reporter was asking leading questions, trying to get a bad interview out of him so that he could have a story that would obviously sell to the media. In other interviews, Jake has made it clear that COVID is very real and has killed a substantial amount of people. So the whole thing is a little confusing to me, but the audio clip does not lie and does not look good on Jake. Up next, number nine, we have Belle Delphine. The cosplay YouTuber has landed herself in a few controversies this year for different reasons. The main controversy being her explicit content, which some people says goes a little too far sometimes and should not be allowed on YouTube. She went through a very public battle with YouTube in recent months after they terminated her channel without any warning, claiming she did not follow the sexual content policies. She ended up getting her channel back, but some people did not think that that was right. It didn't help that just a few days after her channel was reinstated, she announced that she'd be filming her first adult video and would be selling the used condom from it <laughs> that they used in it. Selling strange items is something that she's always done, and despite receiving backlash each time, she continues to do it. Last year, she sold jars of her bath water, so this is definitely a step up from that, but a step in the wrong direction, if you ask me. Oddly disturbing and disgusting. Cruising into number eight, we have Johnny Depp and Amber Heard losing their movie roles. It would be typical for me to put their lawsuit as the reason they are on this list, but of course we cannot ignore it. Their highly publicized lawsuit has probably been the biggest scandal of 2020, mainly because the media is constantly flooded with new updates on it. But one of the biggest controversies that has come from this lawsuit is that both of them as actors are losing or gaining movie roles and fans are not happy about it. Johnny Depp was asked to resign from Fantastic Beasts and agreed to it, and fans were left completely devastated. With all the drama surrounding their lawsuit, they didn't feel comfortable keeping him as the lead, and he respectfully accepted their request. But this left fans pissed because Amber Heard has been talking about how she's excited to film Aquaman 2, which is set to come out in 2022. People don't agree that she should keep her role, so one fan started a petition to have her removed from the movie, and it has surpassed more than 1.3 five million signatures. So we're gonna have to wait and see what the studio decides on that one. Up next, number seven, we have Jonah Hill slams the fashion industry. This was a scandal that a lot of people were happy about. Well, everyone who is not working in the fashion industry. The super bad actor revealed that he has always been interested in style and fashion, but found it difficult to dress the way he wanted because the fashion industry ignores people who are overweight. He did an interview with GQ and said, it's really hard when you're overweight to dress a certain way because clothes aren't made for people who are overweight to have style. So I think it surprises people. Being overweight and in comedy, you're not supposed to be into fashion on either of those sides. His interview actually came after a fitness expert went on the morning and said that she would never work with fat people and that she didn't believe plus size clothes should be available to buy. Jonah, along with a lot of other people on the internet, thought that this was very unfair and some even said that it was cruel. Rolling into number six is the Pope's Instagram. Probably one of the more uncomfortable scandals of 2020 and one of the strangest headlines I've ever read. The Pope was making news headlines after his Instagram account liked a photo of a Brazilian model wearing a sexy schoolgirl outfit. The model, Natalia Garabato, thought it was hilarious and made jokes that this means she's going to heaven now. But the Vatican is now seeking answers from Instagram after claiming that there is no way his account liked that image. 
Holy See officials said the Pope does not run his own account and rejected the possibility that one of his social media managers might have accidentally clicked the image. They are now blaming Instagram for the incident and recently opened an investigation. Halfway through our list number five is the Pokemon scam. This scandal has been a hard one for me to personally follow along with because I don't know much about the Pokemon world. But Logan Paul has had a personal Pokemon advisor who has been telling him the value of specialty cards that he has been investing in. This led other YouTubers and influencers to do the same, thinking that their Pokemon cards were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. These influencers were hyping up the Pokemon card market for months before planning a huge live stream event where they would open a $375,000 box of specialty cards live with the viewers. The live stream was meant to be some epic event, but when they opened the box, they realized it was all fake. Everyone involved looked like complete fools, especially Logan Paul's advisor who had been valuing these cards at such a high price, meanwhile they weren't even real. So if he can't tell which cards are real and fake, how is he even an advisor on the subject? I'm confused. People were furious, especially since Pokemon card prices went up after all of this, and some people believe the whole thing was a giant scam and that they did this for clout and views. Here now at number four, we have Charlie D'Amelio buying TikTok followers. This sounds too petty to be some sort of big celebrity scandal, but it was because she was the first TikTok star to ever hit 100 million followers. The 16 year old made history recently after being the first user to hit that many followers on the app and people started accusing her of buying them to get to that number. Her hitting this number was a huge event and TikTok announced they were donating $100,000 to the American dance movement in her name to congratulate her hitting that milestone. But one user posted a video which showed that if you actually clicked on some of Charlie's listed followers and you look at their following, their accounts show that they are not following Charlie. Another user also showed that when you watch her real time statistics, there are huge spikes every 20 seconds and that it didn't make much sense. Charlie has not responded to these claims, which just made people more angry. In our third spot is the Dave Chappelle boycott. The comedian has been taking some heat in recent months after he posted a video to his Instagram asking his fans to not stream his episodes of his Comedy Central show. Well, he actually said don't stream them until they pay him more money. If you're a bit confused on this, which I totally get, he had abruptly quit Chappelle's show a few years ago without any notice, but because of the contract he had signed before he quit, he does not get any additional money for the stuff that he had filmed. So after he quit the show, they still released a shortened third season and used some of his previously unreleased sketches because they have the right to them and they still do. So they don't technically owe him any money for streaming episodes now because he was paid at the time that he had filmed them and the contract states that he would not get additional money. So for him to suddenly demand money, a lot of people don't think that it's right. He asked Netflix to remove it from their platform and they did, but Viacom BS, which owns Comedy Central, uh, did not. Moving on to number two is Tori Linez shoots Megan The Stallion. This story completely shocked me when I first found out about it this year. Tori shot Megan in the foot and then offered her hush money afterwards. This is like something from a movie. If you have not heard the story yet, the incident happened back in July in the Hollywood Hills. Tori was riding in an SUV with Megan when they got into an argument with another passenger who was with them. The argument led to Tori firing off some bullets and a few of them were at Megan's feet as she was trying to get out of the car, one of the shots being successful. It's unclear whether or not he was intentionally trying to shoot her, but she shared screenshots online of him texting her apologies afterwards when she was in the hospital. Despite kind of admitting it in text when he apologized, he has pled not guilty for felony counts including assault with a semi-automatic firearm, personal use of firearm, and carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle. His next court date is January 20th, 2021, and if he is convicted, he could face up to 23 years. Winning the number one spot is Harry Styles wears a dress. This is one scandal that shouldn't have even been a scandal in the first place, but in the end it was probably a good thing that it caused controversy because it shed a lot of light on a situation and maybe it was something that needed to be talked about. The singer posed on the cover of Vogue in a dress and faced a ton of criticism because of it. People started to say that he wasn't a real man and the comments got out of hand. 
A famous activist, Candace Owens, tweeted at his Vogue cover and wrote, There is no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this. In the West, the steady feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It is an outright attack. Bring back manly men. Some fans and even celebrities came to Harry's defense. Harry did not speak out about all the backlash, but instead he posted an Instagram photo of him eating a banana and then captioned it, bring back manly men. At, num at number 10, Matt LeBlanc. Remember that one episode of Friends where they joked about Joey being in an adult film? You know the one where he played the copy machine guy? Well, did you know that that bit was actually based on real life? Yes, Matt LeBlanc, the actor who played Joey Tribbiani in Friends, actually had a part in an adult entertainment series before his time on Friends. Matt had a role in a Showtime series called The Red Shoe Diaries. This show was about a man who had written an ad for a newspaper asking people to send in their stories about life-changing encounters that they've had with their partners. The man who was the show's narrator would begin each episode by reading a letter aloud, and well, I'm sure you can imagine the rest. Matt LeBlanc had a steady role in the show, and though it isn't necessarily a traditional adult film setting, it's still funny to imagine him in this role, and it's still made for some pretty funny content on Friends. At number 9, Tim Allen. Today we know Tim Allen as an actor and comedian known for his roles on Home Improvement, the Santa Claus films, and Toy Story, but before his rise to fame, he was actually a felon. In 1978, just shortly after beginning his stand-up career, Tim was caught by drug-sniffing dogs at the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport, carrying 1.4 pounds of that good old no-no snow. After being caught with the illegal substance, he faced life imprisonment, but luckily for him, he was offered a deal. In exchange for helpful information, he would be given a reduced sentence. Clearly, he took the deal, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about him right now. Tim ended up ratting on the other dealers he knew, and his sentence was subsequently reduced to three to seven years behind bars, rather than a life sentence. Tim was released from prison 28 months later at the age of 29, and because he was a convicted felon, he found it hard to find work, so he tried giving stand-up comedy another go. Obviously, it was a good choice, and Tim is now a household name. So perhaps getting caught was the best thing that has ever happened to him. Before I continue on with this list, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because it really does help us out a lot. At number 8, Leah Michelle. This year we saw a lot of celebrities getting exposed. Some for past remarks, others for shady business, and everything else under the sun. Actress Leah Michelle got exposed for her bad attitude and traumatic microaggressions by many of her former co-stars, including Samantha Ware, a former Glee co-star. Samantha called Leah out for the way she was treated on set, saying that Leah allegedly threatened to quote, in her wig and that she made her gig a living hell. On top of Samantha's accusations, others came forward to talk about their experiences with the actress calling her cold and rude and saying that she felt entitled and that she was very bossy. Others encountered stories where Leah wouldn't speak to anyone directly and would order her assistants to speak on her behalf and others spoke out about how she treated background actors poorly, calling them cockroaches. Samantha calling Leah out on her past to open a can of worms that ultimately led to her sponsorship with HelloFresh being cancelled but them signing that they don't condone her actions. At number 7, JK Rowling. Author JK Rowling saw a huge amount of backlash from the trans community and their supporters as she came under fire multiple times this year for things that she said, as well as the content of her new novel. This scandal started off as JK tweeted out in response to an article about creating a more inclusive world for people who menstruate, essentially saying that only women menstruate. Her remarks were seen as transphobic as there were also trans men who menstruate. Later, she tweeted, quote, I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. JK also came under fire for calling hormone therapy a quote, new kind of conversion therapy for young gay people. Now on top of the backlash that JK was facing for her tweets, she began facing even more backlash because of the content of her new book, Troubled Blood, in which it details the story of a quote, transvestite serial killer. Because of the content of this new novel, people saw this as allegedly villainizing trans people, further adding to the backlash of her transphobia. At number six, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne made OnlyFans history this year, being the first to ever make $1 million in their first 24 hours on the platform. Her success was so big that she made over $2 million by the time of her first payout. Now, although her $2 million cash out was good news for her, it was bad news for everyone else on the platform, which led to a scandal. Because of the massive amount of money that OnlyFans was due to give Bella, the payouts for many other creators on the platform were delayed. Now, because this happened in such an uncertain time where people had been losing their jobs due to the pandemic, 
pandemic, the money they'd made through OnlyFans was the only source of income for a lot of users. Now, other than this payout drama, Bella started facing even more backlash for scamming fans. A $200 photo that she labeled as being one without clothing turned out to be one in lingerie. This backlash prompted the OnlyFans platform to change their policies on how much a creator can charge for something. And the scandal that topped this whole thing off was that this whole OnlyFans endeavor turned out to be only research for an upcoming film. At number five, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Just two weeks into the nightmare that would become 2020, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, announced that they would be stepping down from their royal duties. In an event the press called Megxit, the royals announced that they would be leaving their senior royal duties behind and that they would be splitting their time between the UK and North America. With the media's part in their relationship as well as with the rest of the royal family, this decision to leave royal life didn't come as much of a surprise to many. Either way, it was big news to hear that a senior member of the royal family was leaving that life behind. The decision was supported by the Queen and the Sussexes have vowed to continue to uphold their duty to the Queen and the Commonwealth. At number 4, Shia LaBeouf. Recently, Shia LaBeouf came under fire after ex-girlfriend FKA Twigs issued a lawsuit over their alleged abusive relationship. The singer cites battery, assault, and infliction of emotional distress as the things that she endured while in relationship with the actor. One of the incidents talked about in the lawsuits details a time where Shia was driving recklessly and threatened to crash if she didn't tell him she loved him. She also alleges that he knowingly gave her an STD and would sometimes grab her so hard that she would bruise. She opened up about her relationship with Shia saying that it was the worst experience of her life. Singer Sia has recently come to Twig's side to support her and claims that she too had been quote emotionally abused by Shia, calling him a pathological liar and saying that he tricked her into an adulterous relationship. At number three, Sia. Speaking of Sia, she's also had a scandal of her own this year after she cast Maddie Ziegler as an autistic teenager in her upcoming film. The movie, set to be released in 2021 titled Music, follows the story of an autistic teen and being a production by Sia, it's no surprise that Maddie was cast in it. Maddie has been featured in a number of Sia's productions, but now people are thinking that this casting went too far, saying that this job should have gone to someone who's actually autistic. Many of Sia's fans and followers are questioning why the artist didn't cast someone autistic to provide representation to an underrepresented community. One Twitter user even brought up the notion that quote, she produced a film peddling a harmful stereotype of disabled people and refused to cast a disabled person to play a disabled person, end quote. Soon the hashtag Sia doesn't speak for us started trending and the singer started responding to fans asking about the cast. Though she says that there are other people on the autism spectrum that have been cast in the film, Maddie's casting still doesn't sit right with some. At number two, Tom Cruise. A few weeks ago, Tom Cruise was recorded yelling at the crew of the Mission Impossible film currently in production because they failed to follow their strict COVID precautions put in place. The leaked audio showed the actor yelling obscenities at staff members and threatening to fire anyone who is caught breaking the rules again. In a heated monologue, Tom went off on staff saying that he doesn't want their apologies and that they can explain themselves to the people who've really been affected by COVID. He also sort of touched on how lucky they are to have this job since production has been delayed so much already and that if they shut down, they'll cost people their livelihoods. Now when news of this broke, people were outraged that Tom would go off like this, even comparing his rant to the infamous Christian Bale rant on the set of Terminator. Others however pointed out that this might be the talking to that these people need in order to really take those precautions seriously. What do you think? Was he fair for what he said or was it uncalled for? At number one, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne faces some serious legal trouble after pleading guilty to possession of a firearm and ammunition by a convicted felon. These charges came after a search was conducted of his private jet, revealing a gold-plated handgun in his possession. This was a big deal for the rapper because after spending time in jail on weapons related charges back in 2010, he's no longer permitted to have a firearm. While searching, they also found personal amounts of various illegal substances. Lil Wayne has pleaded guilty to the charges he's faced with and if convicted as charged, he can be looking at up to 10 years in prison. His sentencing is set for the end of January 2021, but until then, fans are hoping for the best for the artist. In at number 10, Ellen DeGeneres. I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing about Ellen at this point, but man, if I didn't put her on this list, there would be still a ton of people wondering why she isn't on it. Instead of just reiterating all the details about each time that Ellen was the worst, I can just cover them quick for you. So there was her friendship with George Bush, being rude to Nikki Tutorials, snubbing Dakota Johnson, embarrassing Giada De Laurentiis, forcing Mariah Carey to drink while she was pregnant, being mean to her staff members, allowing for executives to harass other staff members, embarrassing her own audience members, and taking charity donations from California schools through the lottery. 
battery system. You know, there's a lot and I'm sure as time goes on, more troubling stories will arise and we'll do our best to keep you in the loop. In number nine, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star Cosmetics Company has brought in hundreds of millions of dollars and according to Forbes, he is now one of the most powerful figures in the industry. Star first rose to fame when his makeup vlogs on YouTube started to become popular. However, now that he is intertwined with all the drama happening in the beauty community, he is being bombarded with hatred and rightfully so. Cameron Lester called him and Shane Dawson out for using him as their token black friend for videos and from there it just got worse. Their troublesome friendship really came about when Shane wanted to document Star in what would be called the beautiful world of Jeffree Star. Following Cameron's video, Jeffree left him a voicemail and denied his allegations against him. The voicemail was leaked to drama channels and contributed to the negative wave that would soon erupt after Shane acknowledged the rumors about his role in the feud between Charles, Westbrook and Star. In number 8, Chrissy Teigen. In a now deleted tweet, Chrissy Teigen posted during the pandemic that she loved clam chowder and would be having it shipped from Boston to wherever she is in California. In the tweet she said, this is not an ad, but if you are holed up at home, ordering America's best food from Gold Belly is the way to go right now. Currently shipping clam chowder from Boston to myself. After getting absolutely blasted online for being tone deaf, she made a weird apology that just said, correction, do not order soup. This prompted a perfect response that said, hey there, it's not about the soup, never was. It's about people being scared about not having enough resources, who can't do what you do. Isolated people using social media to connect and if they see something like that and then feel worse because they can't. Although instead of admitting that she may have missed the mark with that tweet, she just further defended it by shifting the focus to her being the victim who just wanted some soup. Celebs, they're just not like us. <laughs> In at number 7, Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Hudgens has had some major issues with her fans after departing from her once innocent Disney image. Her fans loved her in High School Musical, but when she started doing films like Spring Breakers, it seemed like she was trying too hard to break that image. When the lockdown started happening, she got herself into even more trouble while doing some Instagram live streams with her fans. Her fans asked her how she was feeling about the quarantine, and Hudgens said this. If everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? At that point in time, no one really had any idea when the lockdowns would be lifted and they're still not really lifted. You can clearly tell though that she was just annoyed by the inconvenience of needing the lockdown to protect the sick and vulnerable. And this kind of selfish behavior was frowned upon by many, including whatever fans she had left. In number 6, Madonna. Madonna is one of the many celebrities we'll talk about on this list that either felt the need to share their views on the virus or outright claimed that we don't have to worry. Madonna received a ton of backlash after a video she posted to Instagram of her enjoying a bath while ranting about the pandemic. The clip was shared to her nearly 50 million followers as she sat in a bathtub filled with rose petals while listening to some very creepy piano music. That's the thing about COVID-19. It doesn't care about how old you are, what amazing stories you can tell. It's the great equalizer. Then she ends the whole video giving her legion of fans little to no hope whatsoever. She just closes out by saying, Like I used to say at the end of the human nature every night, if the ship goes down, we're all going down together. Come again? What? Thanks, Madonna. That really calmed me down. The backlash for this post was insane, too, with many calling her and other celebrities out for getting early access to testing kits and somehow still complaining. In number five, Elon Musk. Aside from tanking his own company's stock prices when he made a weed joke about selling it when it hits 420, Musk has tweeted many other things about the pandemic that were troublesome. Elon tweeted on March 6th, the coronavirus panic is dumb. Musk then continued to tweet about how the virality of COVID-19 has been overstated due to conflating diagnosis date with contraction date and overestimating its growth. However, even in March, this was an unhelpful opinion. The US handled this virus terribly and it shows in the number of people that have died as a result. By having so many people immediately denying that the virus even exists can be directly attributed to how a country was able to come together to take the necessary precautions. Elon Musk has a huge audience and therefore this hot take lands him on our worst celebs of 2020. In it number four, Jake Paul. Jake Paul has always been the number one villain on YouTube. He became famous by way of doing crazy stunts and creating controversial content. There was the jumping on the news van after the neighbors called the police because he was having a party. Then there was the dangerous bird box challenge that impacted YouTube's policies and procedures. And in 2020, Jake continued the trend by being arrested for unlawful assembly during riots in Arizona. Then according to the LA Times, his house was raided by the FBI in connection to the looting investigation from late May. Although those charges were dropped by Arizona officials, the FBI discovered at least five law 
long guns with one casually leaning against his hot tub. Additionally, the FBI raided a house in Las Vegas called the Graffiti Mansion that was also in connection with the same investigation. In at number 3, Amber Heard Many people were bringing up that Amber had faked her abuse story to destroy Depp's career and raise her own. Following those audio tapes that confirm these claims from fans, Amber Heard has felt the full wrath of the internet. She was ridiculed when she hired a private investigator to look into Johnny Depp, mainly because the search turned up empty, but also because all her investigator found out was how terrible Amber was to Johnny. Now Amber is potentially facing up to 3 years in jail for falsifying evidence in order to obtain a temporary restraining order against her ex-husband. Many do not even want to see her being brought back for Aquaman 2 and they're using Twitter to let people in charge know how much they hate her. If Amber did indeed fake her injuries to get a restraining order, she will face jail time and we will definitely not be seeing her in the next Aquaman or any movies for that matter. Although judging from comments online, even if she doesn't serve jail time, it's safe to say that she's lost whatever fans she has left. In at number 2, Shane Dawson Shane was one of the first people on YouTube that garnered popularity and he has managed to continually grow that audience over the course of many years. In 2008, when Dawson was 19 years old, he joined YouTube and began making videos. He rose to fame on the site, garnering over half a billion views by 2010. Although now those old comedy sketches of his have come back to bite him. Aside from all the drama that he's gotten himself involved with in the beauty community, he certainly has his own controversial issues. And it's crazy how fast he went from being one of the most loved YouTubers to one of the most hated now. There are so many things that he's done from blackface to some very inappropriate comments. If you want to learn more about all the crazy things that he's done though, just check out our video called Top 10 Times Shane Dawson Went Too Far. I fully go through everything on that one. Coming in at number 1, David Geffen. David Geffen is a record and film producer who with Steven Spielberg and Jeffrey Katzenberg started DreamWorks and a number of other companies. With a net worth of over 9 billion dollars, Geffen became one of the worst celebrities when he started flaunting his wealth during the pandemic. A user named Southpaw tweeted out screen caps of David's massive yacht posted on his Instagram and said, "Thanks David Geffen for your thoughts." I don't know what was going through his head when David posted this photo of his yacht with the caption, Sunset last night, isolated in the Grenadines, avoiding the virus, I'm hoping everybody is staying safe. It's so bizarre when you get that the sentiment was there, but it was just a huge misstep to also post a photo of your boat along with that message. I don't know what he was thinking. At number 10, Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick, the star of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, is actually one of those celebrities who actually killed someone. He seems like such a genuinely good person, so when you find out that he's actually got a dark secret, it can be quite surprising. In 1987, Matthew and his then girlfriend Jennifer Grey were driving down a road in Northern Ireland after filming Ferris Bueller and Matthew was driving in the wrong lane and into oncoming traffic. Well, no one knows why he was in the wrong lane or how he got there, but he ended up getting into a head-on collision with another car, killing the two women inside. After spending about a month in hospital, he not only got away with his life, but also the crash. Instead of facing jail time, for which he would have served a 5 year sentence, he was instead charged with careless driving and was given a $175 fine. The family of those who were killed in the accident have said that they have no hard feelings about Matthew having gotten away with the crime, because now he has to live with this guilt for the rest of his life. At number 9, Caitlyn Jenner Here's another celebrity who has a dark past of having been involved in a fatal car crash. Caitlyn Jenner was involved in a 4 car crash in LA that ended with one person losing their life. According to sources, what happened was Caitlyn was driving on the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu when she hit the back of a 69 year old woman's car. The impact sent the woman's car into oncoming traffic where she was hit again by another driver. The woman, Kimberly Howe, died at the scene. After further investigations into the crash, it was found that Caitlyn was not speeding in this case and was actually traveling slower than Howe. Caitlyn failed to brake in time to avoid the collision with the other car and this is what caused the following accident. After deliberations, it was determined that Caitlyn would be cleared of the charges against her as the prosecutor could not determine that Caitlyn was responsible for the crash. Do you think that Caitlyn should have seen more consequences for her involvement in the crash? Let me know down in the comments. And at number 8, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot made the first quarantine blunder when her and tons of other Hollywood elites decided to make a video singing to Imagine to give us all hope through the tough times of quarantine. But instead of giving us hope, they gave us all cringe. And not only was it cringy, it was also really tone deaf to the people struggling while celebrities are in their million dollar mansions. And even though it got a lot of heat, Gal Gadot did not apologize. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Gadot addressed it though, saying quote, sometimes you know, you try and do a good deed and it's just not the right good deed. I had nothing but good intentions and it came from the best place and I just wanted to send light and love to the world. But yeah, I started it and I can only say that I meant to do something good and pure and it didn't transcend. I just came to the conclusion, I do me, you do you. And I'd rather not have you liking me at this moment than not saying my truth. 
truth. And even though I get what she is trying to say, just admitting that it was tone deaf wouldn't really have been like a bad idea. And at number seven, Leah Michelle. Leah Michelle faced her backlash during the George Floyd protests. One former black Glee cast member spoke about how she treated them differently because of their race, with one actor stating that Michelle made her quote, first television gig a living hell, and actually made her question a career in Hollywood. A few days after many others spoke out, Leah posted a long apology to social media, but many had an issue with the fact that she used the word perceived, making it seem like a non-apology. With the statement reading, the responses I received to what I posted have made me also focus specifically on how my own behavior towards fellow cast members was perceived by them. And the apology was so bad, the actress who called her out in the first place said in an interview, all that her apology did was affirm that she hasn't learned anything. At number six, Mark Wahlberg. This one is quite a doozy, and you know, you wouldn't really expect a story like this to involve Mark Wahlberg, but yet, here we are. Apparently, Mark here has a history of racially motivated attacks, and this is one of the dark secrets that have remained hidden from people for quite some time. In 1986, Mark allegedly threw stones and shouted racial slurs at a group of black kids and continued harassing them until someone had to step in and save them. On top of that, he continued his tyranny on the neighborhood's black kids as he harassed another group of kids the following day, gathering a group of white men and shouting and throwing rocks at the kids. A few years later, in 1988, Mark was involved in an incident where he yelled offensive things at a pair of Vietnamese men and hit one of the men over the head with a wooden stick, causing him to fall unconscious and punch the other man in the eye. He got away with all of his actions from the kids to the Vietnamese men, and a lot of people don't know about this, so here you go guys, another celebrity scandal. At number five, Mitt Romney. I have a story about United States Senator Mitt Romney. Yeah, sure, he's not a Hollywood celebrity, but he ran against Obama in the 2012 presidential election, and Obama is a celebrity to me, so he's a celebrity by proxy. Just go with it. Besides, you want to hear this story. Anyway, back in 1983, Mitt Romney and his family were packing up their family car as they were on their way to their cottage in Ontario. Well, the whole family was coming, including their dog, Seamus. But unfortunately, Seamus wasn't fitting in the car, and so to rectify this problem, Mitt put the pup in his crate and tied the crate to the roof of his car. I really wish I was joking, but I'm not. The family started driving, but soon Seamus got an upset tummy because he was so freaked out about being on the roof of the car, and so he started making some chocolate syrup, if you catch my drift, and it started dripping down the sides of the car. Mitt then pulled over, hosed the crate and car down, and continued to drive to Canada. This story didn't break until years later in 2006, and even still, it's been completely buried. This is such a horrible thing to do to your pet. If you wouldn't treat your child like this, don't do that to an animal, period. At number four, David DeLuise. His name might not click at first, but his face sure will. David DeLuis is the actor who played Jerry Russo in Wizards of Waverly Place on the Disney Channel. So you might be wondering what's so scandalous that he could make it onto this list. Well, dear viewer, you're about to be so shocked. In 2018, David was the unfortunate victim of a leak and not the leaky faucet kind. This actor was hacked and his explicit photos began circling the internet. Luckily, his fans came to his aid to show him support and to bury the images online, but it's the internet and these things live online forever. Even former Disney co-star Selena Gomez has something to say about the leak, saying that she felt embarrassed for David and saddened that someone wanted to invade his privacy the way that they did. As someone who's been the victim of leaks and broken privacy herself, she can sympathize with David, but oh boy, was that a scandal? I can't believe I didn't know about this until now. At number three, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence got herself into some hot water after she was called out for being disrespectful to Hawaiian culture. Back in 2012, while shooting for the sequel to the Hunger Games film Catching Fire in Hawaii, she filmed a number of scenes in a wetsuit and being in one for so long, she said that her butt got really itchy and as one would do, she scratched the itch. However, instead of using her hand to scratch, she found an alternative. A rock. What's so problematic about this, you ask? Well, the rocks that she was using are seen as sacred by the Hawaiian people. In an interview where she talked about her butt scratching incident, Jennifer said, quote, there were sacred rocks. I don't know, they were ancestors, who knows? They were sacred, and you're not supposed to sit on them because you're not supposed to expose your genitalia to them. She went on to say that while scratching herself on the rocks, one of them came loose and prompted a landslide, saying, quote, and all the Hawaiians were like, oh my God, it's the curse, and I'm in the corner going, I'm your curse, I wedged it loose with my ass. 
Fans were not happy with the actress and her disrespect from Hawaiian culture, and so she got some heat from the incident. At number two, Lindsay Lohan. In 2018, Lindsay Lohan started trending on Twitter in the middle of the night, and it was for a pretty wild reason. Basically what happened was Lindsay went live on Instagram while in Moscow, and she came across some people who she said were Syrian refugees. While live, she filmed the family and told them that she wanted to help them by getting them a hotel and food and letting them watch TV. She told them, quote, I want you to tell America what you need and I will get it for you, end quote. She then turned to the kid that the family had with them and said that she was going to take him for the night so that she could help him, telling the family that they should not have their child being treated like this, sleeping on the floor, and said to the family that she would bring him back tomorrow. She then starts telling the kid to run away, trying to get him to leave his family and come with her. This whole time she's trying to convince this family to let her buy them a hotel room and sort of starts getting frustrated when they don't go with her. As Lindsay keeps trying to take the kid, the child's mom gets up and punches her. She tells her live chat that she was in shock and that those people were trafficking and that all she wanted to do was help. Online, people were upset for Lindsay for quote, being a white savior, and instead of coming across as a good person trying to help, she was instead seen as offensive. At number one, OJ Simpson. After being acquitted of the 1994 murder of his ex-wife, OJ Simpson thought it was a bright idea to write a book. Not just any kind of book though, one that was a supposed fictional retelling of the crimes that he was accused of, but from the point of view of if he had really done it. Not only was it insensitive to the victims and their families, it also made people think that he was really guilty of the crimes because of the details of the book. It was almost incriminating. The book called If I Did It was supposed to get a TV adaptation as well, but it was all scrapped after the backlash that he and his ghostwriter got became too much. It was incredibly surprising to me, and I don't know how other people did not know about this, so I had to include it on this list. Can you believe it? At number 10, Matt LeBlanc. Remember that one episode of Friends where they joked about Joey being in an adult film? You know, the one where he played the copy machine guy? Well, did you know that that bit was actually based on real life? Yes, Matt LeBlanc, the actor who played Joey Tribbiani in Friends, actually had a part in an adult entertainment series before his time on Friends. Matt had a role in a Showtime series called The Red Shoe Diaries. This show was about a man who had written an ad for a newspaper asking people to send in their stories about life-changing encounters that they've had with their partners. The man who was the show's narrator would begin each episode by reading a letter aloud, and well, I'm sure you can imagine the rest. Matt LeBlanc had a steady role in the show, and though it isn't necessarily a traditional adult film setting, it's still funny to imagine him in this role, and it's still made for some pretty funny content on Friends. At number nine, Tim Allen. Today we know Tim Allen as an actor and comedian known for his roles on Home Improvement, the Santa Claus films, and Toy Story, but before his rise to fame, he was actually a felon. In 1978, just shortly after beginning his stand-up career, Tim was caught by drug-sniffing dogs at the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport, carrying 1.4 pounds of that good old no-no snow. After being caught with the illegal substance, he faced life imprisonment, but luckily for him, he was offered a deal. In exchange for helpful information, he would be given a reduced sentence. Clearly, he took the deal, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about him right now. Tim ended up ratting on the other dealers he knew, and his sentence was subsequently reduced to three to seven years behind bars, rather than a life sentence. Tim was released from prison 28 months later at the age of 29, and because he was a convicted felon, he found it hard to find work, so he tried giving stand-up comedy another go. Obviously, it was a good choice, and Tim is now a household name. So perhaps getting caught was the best thing that has ever happened to him. Before I continue on, with this list, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because it really does help us out a lot. At number 8, Leighton Meester. Leighton Meester, the actress known for playing Blair Waldorf on Gossip Girl, shares something in common with Tim Allen, being that they've both spent time behind bars, though for very different reasons. Leighton was born in prison. Yep, you heard that right. This all came out around the beginning of Gossip Girl's run on TV, and everyone was shocked. Essentially, Leighton's mom was arrested in 1983 for trying to smuggle 1,200 pound shipments of Mary Jane out of Jamaica. Leighton's mom, Connie, her boyfriend, and her sister were all arrested. Connie's sister actually ended up breaking out of prison and became the first woman in the US to land on the US Marshals Most Wanted list. After Leighton was born, her parents were released from prison, and eventually Leighton made her way to LA where she started her acting career. She's since had a lot of trouble 
trouble with her mom, even going so far as to win custody of her brother, but that is another story for another time. At number seven, Adam Hicks. This one is for the Disney Channel kids. Did anyone watch the Disney Channel movie Lemonade Mouth? Well, one of the film's actors, Adam Hicks, has seen his fair share of troubles after leaving Disney. Yet another Disney actor gone rogue. 2018, Adam was arrested for armed robbery after it was believed that he committed four or five robberies along with his girlfriend, Danny Tamburo. According to sources, Adam and Danny allegedly committed these robberies by walking around the San Fernando Valley in California and would go up to innocent people and hold them at gunpoint and demand that they give them anything of value, whether that be cell phones, wallets, jewelry, or otherwise. Now, from what I've seen, there's no word on whether he's been sentenced, but he was being held in police custody with his bail being held at $550,000. His arraignment was postponed last time I checked, but other than that, this scandal has gone cold, so that's probably why no one has heard of it. And at number six, Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Hudgens was another celebrity to have a very unnecessary quarantine blunder. It happened in March of 2020, when she went live on Instagram to talk about the pandemic. And during the live, she says, even if everybody gets it, like yeah, people are gonna die, which is terrible, but inevitable, which just makes no sense at all. Her statement of course created a ton of backlash and she was forced to apologize on Twitter days later, writing in a tweet, I realized my words were insensitive and not at all appropriate for the situation our country and the world are in right now. This has been a huge wake up call to the significance my words have now more than ever. I'm sending safe wishes to everyone to stay safe and healthy during this crazy time. And some people thought that apology didn't go far enough, but also I'm sure with what she said, she didn't really want to have to like repeat it in the apology, so yeah. Halfway number five, Chase Stokes. Breakout star of Netflix's Outer Banks, Chase Stokes, had to issue an apology after past posts resurfaced of him being derogatory to the LGBTQ plus community, people with disabilities, and people of color. But people were annoyed when it seemed like he was trying to blame the whole thing on the hackers that leaked the information. The statement read, I have posted insensitive tweets. My Facebook has been hacked countless times. The picture isn't even of me or anybody I know. Again, I'm incredibly sorry, I really am. I hope you guys see what I'm currently doing and how I'm continuing to do the right thing by being respectful in today's climate. This doesn't excuse my words, nor am I excusing myself. Then he ended up getting his Twitter back and the offensive tweets as well as the apology were deleted. So little sus there. And at number four, Kanye West. Kanye's apology was a little different than the other ones on this list, and that was because instead of apologizing to the public, he was publicly apologizing to his wife, Kim Kardashian. A few months ago, Kanye went on a few tweeting sprees where he said disrespectful things about countless celebrities, including his wife and other members of the Kardashian clan. And around the same time, he also had a campaign rally where he said Kim was thinking of terminating her first pregnancy with her daughter, North. In the days after, photos were released of Kim and Kanye fighting in a car with Kim crying. As a response to everything, he tweeted out an apology to his wife, saying in the tweet, I would like to apologize to my wife Kim for going public with something that was a private matter. I did not cover her like she's covered me. To Kim, I want to say I know I hurt you, please forgive me. Thank you for always being there for me. And even though he apologized, he can never really take back the fact that now everyone knows about that secret, including his daughter one day, which is definitely pretty messed up. And at number three, Alison Roman. Celebrity chef Alison Roman got herself into quite a pickle when she decided to publicly shame Chrissy Teigen. In an interview, Roman said that she was horrified by Teigen's cooking empire and accused people of running a content farm for her, saying in the piece, that horrifies me and it's not something that I ever want to do. I don't aspire to that. But like, who's laughing now? Because she's making a ton of money, referring to Chrissy Teigen. Roman also called out Marie Kondo, who she said just sold out immediately. After the comments went viral online, Teigen responded by calling the comments a huge bummer. But after the backlash got too much to bear, Roman made a formal apology on Instagram, writing, I use their names disparagingly to try and distinguish myself, which I absolutely do not have an excuse for. It was stupid, careless, and insensitive. I need to learn and respect the difference between being unfiltered and honest versus being uneducated and flippant. And at number two, Evangeline Lilly. Evangeline Lilly also got lumped into the mix of celebrities that made quarantine blunders in March when she made an Instagram post saying that her life basically wasn't affected by the virus. They're suggesting that she wasn't social distancing herself from others and that her freedoms are more important than a pandemic. The actress was quickly and widely criticized 
And 10 days later, on March 26th, Lily apologized for her dismissive, arrogant message, saying in a statement, I thought I was infusing calm into the hysteria. I can see now that I was projecting my own fears into an already fearful and traumatic situation. And finally, number one, Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks is another celebrity that had a cancellation during the pandemic. It happened when old clips from America's Next Top Model resurfaced, and she was called out for her harsh behavior. One specifically was a clip from 2006, where she tells Danielle Evans that the gap in her teeth is not marketable, and she should close it to secure a CoverGirl contract. But then a few seasons later, she told someone to widen their gap. In a response, Banks tweeted, I've been seeing the posts about the insensitivity of some past America's Next Top Model moments, and I agree with you. Looking back, those were some really off choices. Appreciate your honest feedback and I'm sending so much love and virtual hugs. But since she didn't actually address any of the shady behavior in that apology, people thought it was more so just a cop out. Beginning at number 10, Katy Perry. One person that you don't often think about having a scandal is Katy Perry. I mean, yeah, she's had some beefs here and there, but nothing too major, right? Well, I mean, she did have a pretty big beef with some nuns, and it was kind of a big deal. Back in 2015, Katie was in a feud with a group of nuns that turned into a legal battle because they just didn't like her. Let me explain. Katie was trying to buy the Sisters of the Most Holy and Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary's aging convent in LA for $14.5 million. She gave her offer to the Los Angeles Archdiocese in order to purchase the property, but when the nuns caught wind this transaction, they were like, heck no, and went behind the archdiocese back to sell the property to a different buyer. They did this because they didn't like what they saw in Katie's music videos and they thought it was too inappropriate. They ended up selling the property for less than Katie offered. The nuns got into some pretty big trouble with the archdiocese and he even ended up taking the matter to court and even accused the buyer of taking advantage of the nuns. They ended up winning the property back so that Katie could still buy it. She got brought into all this mess because Katie wasn't wholesome enough for the nuns. But I mean, have you seen Katie? She's a doll. I'd sell her anything. At number nine, Jude Law. You may know Jude Law from films like Sherlock Holmes, Fantastic Beasts, and The Young Pope, but you might not know about Jude's streak as a Hollywood heartbreaker. Jude was sort of known to have a number of partners, and he and his wife were rumored to have been swingers, someone who would swap partners from time to time. But there came a time where he seemingly left that life behind and entered into a new relationship with actress Sienna Miller. Things were fine, and they even got engaged until a cheating scandal erupted that blew everything out of the water. In 2006, a woman named Daisy Wright, who was the nanny for Jude's children came forward about an alleged affair that she'd been having with Jude. She did an interview with the Sunday Mirror, a British news publication, and went in depth about her relationship with the actor, sharing every juicy detail. She even shared details about their passionate lovemaking and went on to say that Jude was, quote, a great lover who knows how to satisfy a woman. People couldn't believe what was happening having Jude exposed like that, but in a surprise turn, Jude actually owned up to his actions. He came forward and came clean about everything, making a public apology to his then fiance. It was scandalous, but very few people actually know about this. Now before I go any further, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because it really helps us out a lot. At number 8, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow is known for being a little odd. Her brand Goop has garnered a few haters because of how strange and unorthodox it is. She's advertised a number of strange health and beauty products on her site that have people scratching their heads, and her must-have list nearly always includes products that are much too expensive for normal people to afford. Really the consensus is that Goop is weird and it's actually gotten her into some legal trouble in the past. In 2018, Gwyneth was faced with a lawsuit against Goop filed by the California Food, Drug, and Medical Device Task Force over three products that were sold from the Goop website. The $66 Jade Eggs, $55 Rose Quartz Eggs that were advertised to benefit women's health down there, and the Flower Essence Blend that was advertised to, quote, assist in clearing of guilt, shame, and self-criticism and blame. After being taken to court, Gwyneth settled and was ordered to pay $145,000 and reimburse customers who bought those three products, as well as refrain from advertising products that don't actually have any benefits. At number seven, Cat Williams. You don't always hear about celebrities having Karen moments, but when they do, oh boy, is it entertaining. In April 2016, comedian Cat Williams had a Karen moment and it ended with him throwing a salt shaker at an employee. It all started when Cat had arrived at a restaurant with members of his family. 
When they got there, they started seating themselves, but were promptly told that they needed to move because the spot that they had chosen to sit at was already being reserved by another group. Kat then got into a heated argument with employees over the seating arrangement, and then that is where things escalated. He ended up throwing a salt shaker at a restaurant manager. Police were called after Kat threw the salt shaker, but before officers arrived, he had left the scene. He was later found at a Waffle House where he was arrested and charged with one count of battery. Now, I have no clue what was said during this altercation, but I do have a feeling that the most famous phrase of do you know who I am was uttered and I can definitely bet money on it. At number six, Nicolas Cage. There's nothing worse than getting exposed by a book. Well, I mean, there are worse things in life, but for a celebrity, bad press can be detrimental to your image. For Nicolas Cage, he was met with some pretty harsh accusations of dog napping from actress Kathleen Turner, as she wrote in her 2008 memoir, Send Yourself Roses, that he, quote, came across a chihuahua that he liked and stuck it in his jacket. Like I said, bad press can do some serious damage to a celebrity's career, and Nick knew this, so upon finding out about her accusation, he promptly sued her for defamation, libel and slander. Luckily for him, Nick came out on top and won his case, and in return, Kathleen had to issue an apology to him and paid his legal fees and issued a donation to a charity of his choosing. He chose the National Adult Protective Services Foundation, a charity that benefits victims of elder abuse. I really like how he made her donate to a charity and pay it forward rather than just giving him a bunch of money. It's a nicer thing to do. At number five, Sean Combs. Celebrities get sued by random people for random things all the time. Most times, they don't even get reported on because they're just so menial, but this story was so wild that it just had to be shared. Sean Combs, aka Diddy, faced a lawsuit in 2011 from a woman who made a number of wild claims against him. She sued the rapper for $1 trillion because she claimed that he was her child's father and that he never paid her child support and that he once stole a poker chip from her that was worth, quote, 100 zillions of dollars. I cannot make this stuff up. Of the $1 trillion that she was suing for, she claimed that $900 billion was for unpaid child support payments and the rest was for emotional damages. On top of that, she submitted handwritten legal claims that claimed that he had physically hurt her and her kids and that he was the one behind the tragic 9-11 attacks. This lawsuit really didn't go anywhere, but it did get a court date, so it's really more than I was expecting. She also applied for a restraining order against Diddy, but that was denied. This was all so crazy, so I wonder how many people actually knew about this. At number four, George Lopez. It's not every day that you see a big Hollywood star making headlines in Canada. Really, our news headlines are about maple syrup and igloos and the best way to prepare your moves for winter. I'm kidding, but hearing about celebrities getting into shenanigans in the Great White North isn't something that you hear often. Back in 2014, George Lopez was performing a comedy show at a casino in Windsor, Ontario, and he got a little too enamored with that good old Canadian hospitality because he ended up getting pretty tipsy. After having performed his stand-up routine, he had some celebratory drinks at the casino and got a little careless. Away. George ended up flat on the floor after drinking to excess and passing out in the casino. Police were called and took him into custody for the night, though no charges were laid. Later on, he poked fun at his intoxication, saying that he was headed to his room that night, but just quote, missed it by 35 floors. George reportedly gave up drinking after that night. At number three, Bruno Mars. These days, we don't hear much about Bruno Mars, but there was a time when he faced some pretty big trouble and not everyone knows about it. Back in 2010, Bruno was arrested in Las Vegas after a show for suspected possession of that good old no-no snow. According to the police report, Bruno was arrested after hotel security discovered that the singer was in possession of illegal narcotics and he was detained. It was later found that he had 2.6 grams of no-no snow on him. In order to avoid jail time, Bruno ended up taking a plea deal, paying a fine, and serving one year probation. I was surprised to find this out about Bruno because he seems so genuine, but now I don't know what to believe. At number two, Mila Kunis. I have a few more wild celebrity lawsuits that I want to share with you because more people need to know about this. Some of you may recall that actress Mila Kunis is from the Ukraine. Well, when she was a kid, she apparently had a friend who had a pet chicken. Well, one day this chicken just disappeared and Mila was blamed for its disappearance. Well, years later, after Mila became a successful actress, Christina Caro, Mila's childhood friend, ended up moving to America to pursue her dream of becoming a singer. But to her surprise, she moved to an area that was pretty close to where Mila was living. This brought 
brought up some deep-rooted emotions for Christina because she suddenly remembered her poor lost chicken and she ended up seeking therapy to help her cope. Christina also issued a lawsuit against Mila for having allegedly stolen her pet chicken from years ago and was looking to receive money to cover her therapy bills. Christina alleged that this trauma prevented her from, quote, pursuing the American dream. Later, it was alleged that this was all just a publicity stunt to promote her song, but I really don't know how well that worked for her. Still, the mystery as to what happened to the chicken remains unsolved. And finally, number one, Beyonce. I saved the best one for last. I don't know how many people have heard of this, so please tell me down in the comments if you've heard of this story. This seems to be a little obscure, so just let me know. Anyways, Beyonce is one of the biggest names in music, as we all know. I mean, she didn't earn the title of Queen Bee for nothing. She's faced a number of wild lawsuits in the past, including one where someone claimed to have been the surrogate for Beyonce's daughter, Blue Ivy. But one story in particular takes the cake and not enough people know about it. Beyonce was once sued by one of her former drummers for allegedly using extreme witchcraft to ruin her life. The drummer, a woman by the name of Kimberly Thompson, claimed that the singer used magic spells on her, killed her pet cat, cursed her relationships, and made her lose out on money and jobs. She also claimed that Beyonce stole her home, property, computer, and hard drives, and that she tapped her phone as well. There's no proof that Beyonce ever did any of these things, but if she really did use magic, how would she have left evidence? Smart. The judge threw this case out and also denied her request for a restraining order. Wild stuff. For 10, WAP. This past summer, Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion released their song WAP, and although it was a bop. A lot of people were enraged by it, causing a huge scandal in the media. The song itself is a female sexual anthem where they sing about certain experiences and just celebrate their sexuality. This is a theme that has been explored before by a lot of male artists and it goes over fine, but for some reason this song was hit with a lot of backlash. A lot of criticisms that came about after the release of the song detailed how vulgar the song itself is. While yes, it is pretty raunchy, it's nothing that adult ears can't handle. Much of the song's content made a number of people uncomfortable, but others saw it as an anthem for female sexuality, which is quite a refreshing idea as the vulgarity comes from women rather than the male gaze. The content even brought Ben Shapiro, founder of The Daily Wire, out to comment about the song, saying that if women are really experiencing that WAP, they should seek medical attention, which caused doctors to have to set the record straight that it is perfectly normal. This probably wasn't the response that neither Cardi nor Megan expected, but hey, it was still good press. At number 9, Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada was the center of attention for a little while this past summer after her entanglement with singer August Alsina went public. Jada faced some backlash for this for a few reasons. One being her foggy relationship with Will Smith. When news broke of Jada's relationship with August, people immediately thought that she had been cheating on Will and that this news was going to blow up in his face. But after discussing it on their Facebook watch show Red Table Talk, they revealed that the two of them had split up a few years ago and that Jada's relationship with August was not an affair. But another point that some brought up about this entanglement was August's relationship to the Smiths. August was first friends with Jaden Smith and met Jada at an event. Now, after getting closer with the Smiths, Jada took August in to help with his mental health and the liver condition that he was dealing with. This led to them beginning a relationship and well, you know the rest. Now, some have pointed out that Jada having a relationship with her son's friend was inappropriate, but I wanna know your thoughts on this. Is it weird that this relationship occurs through her son's friend or is it perfectly normal? Let me know down in the comments. At number eight, Leighton Meester. Leighton Meester, the actress known for playing Blair Waldorf on Gossip Girl, shares something in common with Tim Allen, being that they both spent time behind bars, though for very different reasons. Leighton was born in prison. Yep, you heard that right. This all came out around the beginning of Gossip Girl's run on TV, and everyone was shocked. Essentially, Leighton's mom was arrested in 1983 for trying to smuggle 1,200 pound shipments of Mary Jane out of Jamaica. Leighton's mom, Connie, her boyfriend, and her sister were all arrested. Connie's sister actually ended up breaking out of prison and became the first woman in the US to land on the US Marshals Most Wanted list. After Leighton was born, her parents were released from prison, and eventually Leighton made her way to LA where she started her acting career. She's since had a lot of trouble with her mom, even going so far as to win custody of her brother, but that is another story for another time. At number seven, Adam Hicks. This one is for the Disney Channel kids. Did anyone watch the Disney Channel movie Lemonade Mouth? Well, one of the film's actors, Adam Hicks, has seen his fair share of troubles after leaving Disney. 
yet another Disney actor gone rogue. 2018, Adam was arrested for armed robbery after it was believed that he committed four or five robberies along with his girlfriend, Danny Tamburo. According to sources, Adam and Danny allegedly committed these robberies by walking around the San Fernando Valley in California and would go up to innocent people and hold them at gunpoint and demand that they give them anything of value, whether that be cell phones, wallets, jewelry, or otherwise. Now, from what I've seen, there's no word on whether he's been sentenced, but he was being held in police custody with his bail being held at $550,000. His arraignment was postponed last time I checked, but other than that, this scandal has gone cold, so that's probably why no one has heard of it. At number six, Woody Harrelson. We know Woody Harrelson as a successful actor known for films like The Hunger Games, Now You See Me, and Natural Born Killers, but the latter is a movie that might hit Woody here a little close to home. You see, he's not the only one in his family to have notoriety because his father Charles has also garnered fame, but for all the wrong reasons. Woody Harrelson's dad was a hitman. When paparazzi and reporters want to dig up your past views against you, this one will certainly strike a nerve with Woody. Charles Harrelson was a hitman known by most as the man who assassinated U.S. federal judge John H. Wood. According to Woody, his father Charles left the family when he was still young and said that he hadn't heard from him until 1981 when the news of his father's arrest was broadcast. Until his death in 2007, Woody had a strained relationship with his father, though he admitted that he would visit him in prison often. Of all the celebrity parents, Woody Woody's dad was definitely one of the wildest. At number five, Millie Vanilli. The lip sync scandal that surrounded Millie Vanilli was one of music's biggest scandals, and I've never heard about it. Have you? Essentially, Millie Vanilli was a musical duo that was never really real. I mean, they were real people, but their music wasn't theirs. The stage act was put together by German record producer Frank Farron in an attempt to create a star from scratch. He had a vision to be able to put out this amazing music, but he needed the perfect act to sell it. That's where Morvan and Politis came into play. These two dancers were hired by Farron to be the faces of Millie Vanilli, and though it was a musical act, they didn't have to sing. In fact, they never did. The songs were written and produced for them to lip sync to, and it worked for a while, but like all good things, they can never last. Millie Vanilli conquered the Billboard charts and even won a Grammy for their song, Girl You Know It's True. They were asked to tour and perform live, but since this act never actually sang, things started to get difficult for them and playing pretend wasn't working anymore. When they would encounter technical difficulties with their track while live, it was stressful and humiliating. Eventually, they were caught in their lie as their track suddenly stopped working during a live performance, revealing to the world that they were faking it all along. This took a huge toll on the duo, especially their mental health, driving Politis to take their own life. This ended in tragedy, but it was still a huge scandal at the time. At number four, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is always in some kind of trouble. He's either making waves in the media for acting a mess, whether that's being racist or pulling wild stunts. Most recently, he's faced backlash as he's been accused of harming his ex-girlfriend, FKA Twigs. But there's another scandal, rather scandals, that might not be as well known, and that's his plagiarism and lying. Shia LaBeouf has been caught plagiarizing people's work and lying about it on many occasions, but he's never really learned from his mistakes. He's been caught plagiarizing apologies, then plagiarizing other apologies to apologize for plagiaries. <laughs> He's copied the actions of Sia and the words of Tigger and a plethora of other people, but one of the biggest plagiarism scandals he faced is when he ripped off a plot from a graphic novel for his film, HowardCantor.com, which premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. When he got caught plagiarizing, he claimed that he had no idea that the plot was the same, and then when issuing a statement slash apology for his actions, he once again turned to plagiarism and copied a Yahoo Answers post. Because of how many times he's done something like this, I have to wonder if he's doing this on purpose to make it his brand or something because he knows he's not getting away with it. At number three, Dr. Seuss. Recently, we've been hearing a lot of news about Dr. Seuss. Well, his books, really. Though he was a beloved children's book author, famous for creating The Cat in the Hat, The Grinch, and Horton Hears a Who, now people are finding out that some of his books contain racist imagery. Six of Dr. Seuss's books have now been pulled from his collection and will no longer be published because of racist imagery, but this discussion isn't new and has been a minor scandal for many, many years. A survey of Seuss's work found that the portrayal of black characters in his books relied heavily on, quote, anti-blackness and images of white supremacy. Supremacy, end quote. Schools and libraries have been banning many of Seuss's books because of the racist portrayals of non-white characters, and these criticisms have been linked as far back as the 80s. 
It's good to know that now people are recognizing racism and taking action to eliminate it from our world, so it's a good step forward. This scandal has been brewing in the background for some time now, so people are only now learning about it, which is probably why no one really knew about it until recently. At number two, Sinead O'Connor. In October 1992, Sinead O'Connor caused some controversy during her guest spot on SNL. She was brought on the show to be the evening's musical guest, and already people were a little confused by her as she refused to sing one of her songs from her recent album, at the time. She instead opted to sing an a cappella version of Bob Marley's song War. It was an intense performance and she even changed some of the lyrics to specifically mention young people. As the song came to an end and she was wrapping up her performance, she pulled out a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up saying, quote, fight the real enemy. Sinead's actions caused a huge stir. After her performance, NBC started receiving thousands of angry calls over the following days and even some celebrities came forward to criticize her actions. She wanted to bring attention to the Catholic Church's treatment of young people because she's had personal experience with such things. I never knew about the scandal, so I'm curious to know how many of you guys remember this. And finally at number one, Justin Bieber. Jay Beavs has had a plethora of scandals. As we all know, he's had a rough time in the public eye for many years, and he's caused a lot of trouble. His relationship with Selena Gomez, as well as many DUIs, music scandals, as well as being banned from some places are a few that come to mind, but one scandal that might be new to some is that in 2011, a woman alleged that Justin was the father of her child. Mariah Yeeter came forward in 2011 claiming that she had once met up with Justin backstage after one of his concerts and that he had fathered her child. When this news first broke, Justin said that he had never even met Mariah, let alone had a relationship with her, but since the media was blowing the story up and Mariah was looking to enter into a paternity suit, Justin agreed to take a DNA test to prove that the baby wasn't his. He ended up addressing this whole situation in his song Maria, but unfortunately for the Biebs, this kind of thing would happen again in 2013 with yet another fan. He didn't father any children though, so I guess that's good for him. Now I'd like you guys to tell me about a celebrity scandal that made you think differently about someone. Is there a scandal that made you not want to be a fan of this person? And what happened? Let me know down in the comments.